Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club, our weekly movie club, let's call it. So we, are, we are pretty good in uh, attendance. We are pretty good in, frequent, in frequency, right? So almost every week it happens. It happens. Okay, so today we have a pale uh, rider, 1985, and it's with Clean Eastwood, right? Can we say that genre is Western? What do you think, actually? Is it Western? Cowboy movie? Yeah, it's a, it's a Western. We call them spaghetti Westerns because they're made in Italy. So, But not this one, right? This I, don't, one? I don't know. This one might be American. It's not <laughs> the same character as the other ones, yeah. <laughs> so maybe this one's not. It's just an Eastwood Western, I guess, which are unique. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen just to show. We have synopsis today. Uh, but it's nine pages. I don't Real think long. You, yeah. yeah, I don't think you can read it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I'm having challenges with Zoom as always. Okay, almost there. Papa, robot, it works. Okay, so that's the our cast. Vova, could you please read and describe us these characters? Stranger. Preacher. 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 The uh, main character. Mm -hmm. Protagonist. Uh -huh. Protagonist. Have, have you heard? Protagonist and antagonist. Yes. So the, the good one and the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> Who is antagonist in this movie? Mm. Oh, Lahut and. Lahut, right. right. As and his, his son. Stock, okay. The Stockburn, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, who is who? How about it? Um, who, how about it? Is a. Uh, it's kind of a front man, right? Kind of a. I, I, I got it like he's. Kind of a main one, or yes, main in his company. It's about a small town of miners, mm -hmm. people who pan for gold in rivers. So there are small time miners who pan for gold. They don't dig uh, in the ground like normal. They just look for pieces of it that wash down in the water. Mm -hmm. So they'll scoop up. So they'll scoop up the bottom of the river or the bottom of the stream, and then they'll shake out the rocks and hope that they find a piece of gold. Mm -hmm. Usually, do you think that they don't have any hierarchy? So there is no main one. They just, you know, all together because they it's win-win for them. Yeah, they're just, they're all peers. There's no boss. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Hull is just the main character of the miners. Yeah. Okay. So he's a main in a sense that we speak about him more than about others. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, they're all equal. They're just a bunch of guys that got together and they share camaraderie and mine together and stay together and yeah, just friends. Okay. Okay. Understandable. Okay. Who is Sarah? Who? Please continue. Uh, Who's wife? Housewife? Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and Megan is her daughter, right? Yes. Okay. Who is Spider Conway? It's another minor, right? Spider Conway is the other man in the who's no, this, this company. This is camp, right? It's yes. not a company, really. So, and you know, when you speak about other, and it's a one, so one other is another, right? So it's another man. <laughs> okay, let, let's go. Uh, the antagonist, right? The, the hood. The hood. So, you know, because we read uh, Honor Yours, now I, I'm watching for the names. You know, I <laughs> watch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> good, good. It sounds French. What do you think? Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds foreign. Yeah. Okay. Let's go, Fusion. Just his son. 
Gulag. Where he, uh, where he stone guy. Stone guy, yeah. And he's gone. Mm -hmm. I and we call it company, it's very... But, yeah, so the Lahut has a company, right? So if uh, Hal Barrett, they just peer, they just, I don't know, friends or something, but uh, Lahut, he, he has a company and, and he has workers, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And Glad probably one of his workers. Actually, you know, when, uh, when I opened this document, uh, this retarded word, can you see? It's, uh, yeah. It says it's, it's considered offensive. <laughs> It is. It means to, to the retarded people. Maybe I don't know. It's it, it's it's exactly what they are. I mean, it's it's a good it's a good word. The liberals probably take offense. He's mentally challenged. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we call it idiots. <laughs> idiots. Yeah, no, an idiot's offensive. <laughs> retarded. <laughs> retarded is a medical condition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you call? We call him a simpleton. Simpleton, yep, yeah. yep. The uh, the liberals call people like me that support Trump. They call us Trump tards. Trump tards. <laughs> because we're we're retarded because we support Trump. So we're <laughs> stupid. We're idiots. We're <laughs> Trump tards. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the last one, right? Stagborn and his deputies. Uh, seven muscles. <clears throat> Then the um, not very liberal. Yeah, correct. What does what does mean correct? Someone uh, offered him uh, them a lot of money. Yeah, someone. Some, yeah. We call it a bribe. You know, when someone takes gives you money, so get this and forget about law. You know, for five minutes. You know, I will do something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sideline hobby there, sideline business. <laughs> okay, so, but they are not marshals really, right? So the one is the marshal and others his uh, assistants. Deputies, yeah, yeah. Okay, Leila, do you know what is the gold rush? Sorry? Do, do you know what does mean gold rush? Ah, uh, I think it is the place, right? In California? Kinds of um, it's kind of a time. It's kind of, kind of a time period, I guess. Yeah, around, around 1849, if I remember correctly, someone right. found someone found gold in in California. You know, dug a mine and hit gold or something. So after that, it's like the hills, the mountains are full of gold. So thousands of people started rushing to California to oh, find cool. gold and get rich. So that period was called the gold rush. Everyone so was teacher, rushing to California. Teacher Lee, it's the only period, right? Not the place then. Right, it's just a time period. Okay. And at this time, was Sacramento the capital of uh, California? I'm not sure, I have no idea. Because I was here Sacramento like a very important city at this time. It's an important city. I don't think it was ever the capital, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I, I read a, a lot of books about cowboy times and gold rush times. And I, I remember that why people went there for the gold? Because, you know, in Europe, everything was mined already. So there are no new place. And this right. is a new continent, you know, and you have to, yeah. you have to get luck, you know, just, just like yeah. this. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of mountains, just go someplace, start digging, you might find gold, free money, you know, so it's like Hollywood, you know, I'm going to go to California, I'm going to become a famous movie star. <laughs> it's not quite that easy. <laughs> you know, yeah, because it's not quite easy and because it's kind of a lottery, right? You can win or you can lose and you yeah. probably, and you more likely will lose it than, than you, you win it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I just checked check and Sacramento is the capital of California. I didn't know that. Oh, it is? Okay, I didn't know that either. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was thinking, was... what's the capital? Yeah. Okay. Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, I would think San Francisco, Los Angeles. Okay, so Sacramento is the capital. Okay. Well, you know, my favorite joke about uh, the gold rush is that during the gold rush, this most profitable business, do you know which one is the most profitable business? Uh just mining gold? Nope. 
<laughs> you know what? I have just watched Gone with the Wind. And I just remember one or two things from the, you know, people, what they are doing. But I'm not sure. So tell me. <laughs> yeah, so in, in many books about management, they, they write, you know, during the gold rush, you have to sell hardware for mining, you know, this show loss, you know, <laughs> so, so, so because you, you will win for sure. Some miners, they will live in or lose, but you who selling hardware for mining, who selling equipment, you will, you will prosper. Okay. I would think lumber too, because everyone's got to build a place to live, you know, build a small town or a house to live in. So lumber, hardware, shovels, dynamite, anything that you need to dig into the ground. Yeah. And saloons, saloons. Yeah, saloons <laughs> probably boomed also. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really interesting, right? Just to dig mines, you need a lot of things. Yeah. Right, right. And you can lose all your savings. You can lose this lottery. But if you sell in hardware, you are riskless, right? You are getting your money anyway. So there's two ways to look for gold uh, in California, Layla. One way is to dig into the ground. Right. So LaHood, La his giant, his large mining company dug into the ground. They, they used water to dig big holes in the ground. And what they're looking for is small rocks that have gold in them. Okay. Teacher, and that was one of the scenes I didn't understand. I will ask you later, okay? Okay. So, uh, so if you, a lot of times you can go be able build a mine. You basically dig a hole in the mountain, you chip it away slowly, and you'll find rock and you'll see little gold in the rock. Yeah. That's yeah. gold. So you have to break the rocks up and get those rocks with the gold in it, and then you go melt it, and the gold comes out of the rock. Okay, right. So now you got solid gold. Right. So, so digging a mine is one way to do it. The other way to do it is if there's any uh, water or uh, underwater rivers that go through rock with gold in it, some of the rocks and the gold will be flushed out into the water so it, you might have little rocks going down a river that have gold in them right so, so what they'll do is they'll find a shallow part of the river that they can stand and they'll get a pan just a cooking pan and they'll go out there in the river and they'll scoop up a bunch of dirt and then they'll shake it and and get all the mud they'll pour the mud out and look at the rocks and if any of the rocks have any gold in it They'll say, I found some gold, and they'll collect the little rocks with gold in it. We call that panning for gold because they use a pan to dig in the shallow river bottom looking for gold rocks. Right. So the, the small town, those are people that are panning for gold. They don't have any money for big equipment and you know expensive equipment to <laughs> dig into the rock. So they are poor miners. And we call the slang name for those people, they call them tin pans. Tin pans, right. Because they use a tin pan to mine. So they're called tin pans, which means you're a poor, uneducated person and you've got to go out there and, and, and hunt for gold <laughs> in a pan. So you're a, a low life, you know. So, okay. so the La Hood called these people tin pans. He had tin no pan. respect for them at all. Okay, but they, they owned the land that they were mining. So LaHood had, had mined all the other land around it. So he needed new land to mine. So he wanted to take their land to mine and they would not sell to him. Right. So that's what caused this rivalry between LaHood's big mining company and these little tin pan miners. Yeah. Okay. Good segue to our first question. But before we start, I will I will ask Vasans. Vasans, I know that in India there are a lot of gold jewelry, right? So people like it and people use it. Yeah. <laughs> when I think gold, I think India. Yeah. <laughs> do do people gold? mine? Do people mine like uh, gold in Indian rivers still? Uh, no. Uh, it's it's not raised and uh, it's illegal also. Uh, only government has that uh, control over the la mines. You know? Really? The government controls gold mines, huh? Yeah, same, but, yeah. 
Yeah, the same in my country. You no, know, in my country, if you found a gold, gold, let's say I don't know how we call it, bullion of gold or something like a, a small rock of gold, you cannot nugget, sell it. nugget. Nugget. Yeah, if you found a nugget, you cannot sell it. You you have to bring it to like uh, government and say I found it. So it belongs wow. to you. Yeah, and and they pay you some uh, some percent. I, I I remember it was twenty five or something, but but it still belongs to them by law. Okay, uh, so well, so we described <laughs> these two camps, right? So we can we can start with our questions. So we describe the open scenes of the movie, where Hood Riders and the small mining camp. Jukan, do you remember the scene, the first one? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, there were some um, horsemen um, heading toward uh, this small camp, um, and they went there to intimidate them um, to leave the land so uh, the hood can uh, control it or own it. Um, they destroyed everything, um, uh, their houses, their tents, and um, they beat the others. Um, they kill their animals um, and the dog. Yeah. At that moment, I, I was thinking that they are kind of a gang of gangsters or something, right? So it wasn't clear. And I only wonder why they did not kill anyone, right? So they just, it was an uh, act of yes. intimidation, how we call it? Intimidation, harassment, harassment right. trying to make them sell the land to the hood and leave by making mm -hmm. their lives miserable. Mm -hmm. Hostile yeah, work environment, Ivan, hostile work environment. <laughs> 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 exactly. Jihan, why is those those people from mining camp? Why they did not call police? Um maybe because I don't truly I don't know why. Maybe there's no police or they will not stand uh beside them because uh, Lahud um is a rich man and he has all the money. Um, he can get everything um, he wants, uh, even against the law. And um, I remember he had a conversation with someone uh, the, with the preach between Hal and the preach. And he told him, um, can, you, can he get, uh, can you own this land by law? And he said, uh, as long as there is Lahud and his money, uh, he can get whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, what? Yes, I think uh, the, Minus? No, the reason was simple. They don't have tele good telephone. Good phone to call police. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no phone. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed something weird. You know, the, the horses were galloping for so long time. I think it's impossible. Horses cannot walk for so long. Yeah. They could be exhausted. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, I like. Mm -hmm. I was just going. You talk about suspense, Ivan. <laughs> this was a suspense element. You see people riding hard, and then you see this little town, very peaceful, and then people riding hard, and then this little town, very peaceful, mm -hmm. and then the two come together, and it ain't peaceful anymore. The <laughs> <laughs> scene was not was not straightforward for sure. So it was yeah. kind of a, a riddle, right? Why they attack them? Why they attack them? Like pretending to attack, not killing anyone. So yeah. there was a suspense, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we know that miners has uh, had some claim, right, for the land. So they own the, the land. Yeah. But still, they don't have the authority to help them, right? Because of because their opponent was rich and powerful, probably a senator, right? Yeah, LaHood could pay money to the judges and the local sheriffs. So LaHood could buy the, the police and keep them on his side. So every time they reported it, LaHood would just pay the guy some money and say, don't do anything. And the guy would say, okay, you know, yeah. Nothing, nothing is changing in the world, right? So. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. So well, I'll mention one more thing. Another reason we had this gold rush was a lot of the land was public mm -hmm. and if you go out there and you pick a little piece of land and you settle on it you become the owner of it legally 
Wow. We, call, we call that squatting or squatters rights. So the way these people probably got the land is they went out there and settled there. And after staying there and building a little town on it, it became their property. They went to Sacramento and they said, I've been living on this little piece of land for one year. I have squatters rights. I'm claiming this land for my own. And they would write him a little deed and say, okay, you own that land. So that's how these people got ownership of the land. So if you went out during the gold rush and settled on some land, it could become yours for free, no cost. Uh, so that's uh, another reason why people rushed out there. Right, right. That's another reason for immigration, right? Many people who rushed to America, they had no chances to get a, a own land in Europe. They were poor, so they couldn't buy anything. But in, yeah. in America, it's still possible. Dream team, dream land, right? You can get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. So, uh, Megan's state of mind. Layla, you're an expert, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not, but I'm, I will do my best. Um, she's a teenager, right? And uh, she's so emotional. And um, she was really sorry for her dog. And she cried a lot. And she buried her dog, I think, through the walk through the woods, and she buried her dog there. And uh, her prayer is, uh, as far as I remember, is about, you know, uh, complaining about the Lahoots man as well. And she said, we are, we are waiting for a miracle. And then the miracle comes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was very, very religious, right? She yeah, fun. yeah. She is fun. reading book, a, a sacred book, I guess, every time. The Bible, yeah. Now, right. in the Bible, there's a particular passage. We call it the 23rd Psalm. Right. And it's very famous. People, are, people say it in movies all the time. When they're about to die, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me into green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Most Americans memorize this in school. So she's reciting this, this soothing poem of faith, but in between lines, she's being kind of, she's kind of mocking it like, but I don't think so. But things ain't happy here, God. And I don't see you helping us, God. So she's kind of believing and not believing intermingled as she recites this yeah. Bible verse. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't fair, right? This dog, so it was the only victim of... <laughs> <laughs> the cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay, let's go further. So how Barrett's trip into town? Interesting moment, I would say. <laughs> right. <laughs> what sounds would you like to describe number three? What sounds? Are you, are yeah. you yeah. yeah. Um, the three. Yeah. Do you remember? Everyone asked yeah. him. Yeah. Anyway, he, yeah, he went to the town and uh, he, uh, everybody asked him. Uh, about the last time. I think he did it uh, some time ago, but uh, it wasn't successful, I think. He had a bad experience. So uh, they were wondering the same thing is going to happen. Um, he went to the town <laughs> and, and he bought some uh, things from the store, uh, but he was bullied by the troop of uh, say that uh, Lahut, I think, mm -hmm. is, and his henchmen, uh, they were beating him. Uh, they, I think they wanted to scare him uh, just because they didn't seem to uh, say, steal anything from him. They just wanted to destroy his goods. And they were about to set fire uh, on his things. Then uh, the preacher arrived. He saved him from the goons. Yeah. So, so, but uh, after all, how was a brave man, right? He he knew what what to expect in the town, but still went there. So, 
<laughs> it's a good one, right? And another, do you remember that this teenager, they asked him, are you going there after what happened? So why did not they go with him, yeah, right? To, to protect him, to help him. So they... <laughs> 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 Everyone was afraid. Sheep, all sheep. Yeah. Camp of cowards. <laughs> cowards, kind of. Yeah. Afraid of dying. So if you call that a coward, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that he was very peaceful, right, at that moment. He said, "I'm not here for a fight." Then he yeah. could, could not go for for anything. Right? Jahan, please. Um, I have a question. Uh, when Hal went to the supermarket, or I don't know, it's a store. General um, store. Yes, he used to get things, but without paying. Like um, the seller write everything. So what do you call? What do we call this? Because we do this sometimes in real life. We own don't pay. credit. We get mm -hmm. it on credit. So you say I will. I will get it on credit. Yeah, put it on my credit. Yeah, put it on my credit. Put it on my account. Okay, thank you. My mm -hmm. tab, my account, my credit. Many ways to say it. So we didn't have credit cards back then. So they just kept a, a thing. You know, you owe me this much money. You bought mm -hmm. this today. You owe me this much. And the, they kept a running tally of what he spent there. Hoping someday he would find gold and pay it back. So the general store was really kind of a good guy because they were giving the guy stuff for free, hoping they would get paid for it later. Mm -hmm. right. Pretty risky. Yeah. But I know that in, in small cities and villages, it still works because, because people know each other personally, right? It's not just another stranger. It's kind of, right. you know, it's yeah. a Bill or John or someone. Well, some, does, it, does it work in, in your, I don't know, village? Can you go to the shop and buy something on credit yes yes it can happen uh only in local stores because they know the people uh, mm -hmm. so they were mostly the neighborhood so uh, they allow them but yeah, not yeah. Uh, something huge you know something like a supermarket so they won't allow it in in the u.s if you don't have a credit card nothing <laughs> nobody's gonna loan you anything <laughs> no store yeah kind of suits my uh, experience as well. So in big cities, it doesn't work. But in small city, if you, if you live here, let's say, for a week or more, they can sell you, I don't know, bottle of wine or something. But I remember that in Madrid, you know, local store always sell me beer for free because I always forget the money and I brought, my, brought money after. Yeah, those days okay. are almost, those days are gone in America. <laughs> okay. Number four, stranger to dinner. Who over this? Uh, by the school. How? How? Invite the stranger to dinner with her son and brother because he was, uh, he was, uh, he was happy that he saved his life. The stranger saved his life, right? Yes. Okay, well, how we call this? Can, can, do you see the question, right, on the screen? Can you see the comma after Sarah? Yes. How we call this comma? Oxford. Oh, Oxford. Oh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Knows more than my students do. <laughs> 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 Very good. Home. Should you use Fox at home or not? In this way. This way. Okay, in the list, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So he invited stranger because he feel felt uh, that he he owned it to them, right? His so because it was what he was grateful. He was grateful, right? Another way. Okay, uh, and what was the coincidence, right? Describe the coincidence. Number five. John, do you remember this question? Yes, that, well, Megan was uh, reciting these verses of the Bible. The, the pale writer appeared with his pale horse. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, that, that's it. <laughs> this is our, our savior. <laughs> 
the miracle has happened. <laughs> and when she heard what he did about helping holes, she, she thought that it was right. Right. So it, it just uh, repeated the picture from the book, right? So that's why she built a parallel in her mind. But miracles can happen, Ivan. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. They happen all the time. I can see this. Yeah. Uh, so do we call, do we call this uh, type of core of the horse like a pale? Right? Kind of cool for me. Pale means... Uh not much color almost white almost white okay teacher no. i thought about the title a lot why the pale rider <laughs> so first of all i thought that i know the meaning of pale i thought that maybe um this person wants um who doesn't want to have a lot of attraction well maybe. yeah he, he's yeah he doesn't he's not looking for attention he's not looking for money he just wants to be left alone, but but pale here refers to the color of the horse. He was a rider on a pale horse. Okay. And in the Bible, it uses the phrase "death rides a pale horse," a pale yeah. colored horse. So when he came in on this pale horse, she had just read "death rides a pale horse," and she looks up, and there's a man on a pale horse. Wow. And so I she didn't figures, know that, right? Yeah. So the Bible parallel is that this man is named Death, and wherever he goes, according to the Bible, hell will follow. So he makes death in his leaves death in his path. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't read Bible, it's not that clear for you. This. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Leila, don't feel bad. I, I did not understand Teresa before teacher explained. You know, no, no, no. I'm so happy that I'm, I'm learning some things, you know. So, so in her mind, God has sent this man to be their miracle. Yeah. God sent death on a pale horse to cause hell for the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. okay, so she, so she's got a romantic image of him now, right? He's going to save them all. <laughs> Uh, he's in she's in that age now yeah <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay number six ballet scars well, wow. describe them with ballet scars mm, like those on his back uh, yeah so it's kind of yeah but uh very old Actually, but there is a typo, right? So uh, this apostrophe is wrong, right? Scars, just plural. Oh, it should be scars. Yeah, scars. I'm sorry. Yeah, it should be plural. Remember, mm -hmm. he took off his shirt, right, to change clothes. And hold noticed on his back, he had a circle of bullet holes, scars. Someone had shot him in the back with multiple bullets and made a little circle on his back so hall thought that's damn strange but he didn't say anything so now we're wondering first my i wonder how did he survive <laughs> <laughs> at this time <laughs> yeah uh, yes uh maybe it's not right but i remember that uh marshall's shoots uh, like this way. Yeah, it's this way. Yeah, so marshals they use the same patterns when they are shooting. So we understand that it can be connected. We know it's connected, right? Because they yeah. knew it. So yeah. So now that here's a little bit of suspense, Ivan. Now you got a mystery. How is the scar, the, the bullets in his back? How somehow he's related to this gang of marshals, right? <laughs> Maybe they shot him in the back. So uh, maybe a revenge motive is brewing. <laughs> Another mystery: how he survived right after this. <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine. But man. probably because of this, he's a priest now. Priest now. God, it was God's work. <laughs> okay, number seven, right? Uh, any volunteers for this? Yeah, I can say. Please. 
What surprise befalls the group when the stranger shows up for dinner? Befall, it means feel or experience. Yeah, happen I, to. <clears throat> yeah, yep. I think because the stranger's clothes uh, show that he's a preacher. Before he was dressed in dirty cowboy clothes. Yeah, and <laughs> at, from that moment, Sarah's attitude to him has changed. Yeah. Okay, but but what, what exactly? What in his clothes? Could you tell? Um, I think when they first met him, especially Sarah, you know, they were shocked. She was shocked. A man, a gunfighter, she thought. And then after he changes his clothes, here the preacher comes. And yes. she feels respect for him at that moment, right? Because yeah. he's a preacher. Instant attitude change, amazing. Right. <laughs> he's a killer, right. why'd you invite him? Oh, father, please sit down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And do you know why they knew that he was a uh, preacher? Because he's wearing a, a collar, a, a, a clerical collar. You know, this yes. white. Special clothes. No, yeah. but in the, in the neck, they wear a, a, this white clerical collar. This is the, the proof that he's a, a preacher. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah, notice that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a unique kind of collar that only preachers wear. Yes. I, I think in Catholic uh, preachers, they, they, they wear that, but I, I think in other Protestants also do that. Because I think in this case, it's a Protestant because they, they ask him see if he could be married. So Protestant teachers can be married, but not catholic preachers <laughs> yeah 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 i think pretty much all preachers that's kind of a common thing for all denominations they all wear that collar i don't know why <laughs> mm -hmm. but or orthodox prayers they don't have anything special uh -huh. so you, you cannot find them you know in the, <laughs> by their clothes so they only have the costumes for special ceremonies otherwise yeah. it's just, just people yeah Okay, but yes, it was uh, kind of not natural, unnatural, right? How Sarah, what was his name, changed the attitude just instantly, you know? So it was yeah. kind of amazing. Yeah, this is a man of God now. He's a man of God. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Maybe because he's handsome. handsome. Because, <laughs> yeah, because all of them loved him at the same time. But but Jihan, he was handsome before that, right? Before dinner, but she was against. <laughs> yeah, she she thought he was a killer before, and she hated that Hull invited him to dinner. But then when he was a man of God, now he's a good guy and handsome <laughs> instead of a bad guy and handsome. <laughs> okay, but I can tell you one thing. Maybe Sarah saw him the first time. He thought, sorry, she thought some things is um, are going to happen she liked him maybe that's her reaction was because of this i don't know yeah <laughs> jihan thank you <laughs> okay let's go to this uh how to say it mentally challenged guy <laughs> <laughs> number eight any volunteers for this <laughs> what would you like to Mm -hmm. What happened with this guy? He want to. Uh, uh, yeah, let's start from circumstances. So, what was I doing at that time? Uh, okay, the uh, Josh, uh, son of La Lahut, was coming to ask to kill the. Yeah, to kill or to scare, right? To intimidate, yeah, to send yes. a message. Yeah. And who? And um, and this. Um, what what preacher yeah. was doing at that time? What 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 he was doing, preacher? He had a huge hammer. Right? Uh, yes, yes, he was pounding gold. Yeah, mining for gold. He was hitting to the huge uh, bull, boulder. Yes, boulder. Oh, yep. They, boulder. They, were, they were pounding a boulder with sledgehammers. Yeah. To, fill, 
to to, go, to to divide it, right? To, to break it into pieces, yeah. Break it into pieces and find these small uh, margins, right? Margins? Nugget, nugget. Nugget. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, this is like, you know, people are superstitious, you know. There's this one big rock right in the middle of the river. That's it, all by itself. So you imagine superstition. It must be there for a reason. It must be hiding a piece of gold under it. So you have this this romantic notion that if you can bust this big rock, you're going to find a piece of gold under it for your hard work. You know. So. <laughs> yeah, stupid. So what what was this guy club? What he did? Uh, club. <clears throat> Uh, looks very like strange. Yeah, yeah, he looks um, he, uh, he took the flash hammer. Flash hammer, and and uh, he was like uh, he hit the rock. Right? No, no. He was he was uh, scaring, 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 yes, and uh, going to. Going to hit, hit. Mm -hmm. but the previous was very fast. Yeah, he showed him his kung fu, right? <laughs> <laughs> to frighten, yes. The, the, the right word is to frighten, which will correct. Yeah. yeah, so it, it did not work well, right? And it looks for me like club felt some sympathy after all, after this <laughs> kung fu. Okay. Um, so the preacher used his hammer and hit the guy in the balls. Now, for a man, this hurts like hell. <laughs> it is extremely painful. And you can't do anything but just sit there in pain. <laughs> so then he helps the guy back to his horse. So he's kind to the guy. You know, you came here to terrorize me, but I'm going to help you back to your horse. I'm sorry, you know, go home, you'll <laughs> put some ice on it, you'll feel better. So the preacher was kind to him, and he remembered that. <laughs> yeah, he saved his life uh, in, in, the, in the future moments. Right. Yeah. Okay, we are going to second trip into the town. Jart, will you please go over? From Hull's second trip into town, describe the conversation between Lahut and preacher. Yeah. So they I went think, together, yeah? Ah, yeah, I remember. I think uh, uh, Lahoud wanted to buy the, the proprietors of the tin pans. Mm -hmm. they, he only wanted to pay $100 each. That's not very much money. And the preacher suggested that he, could, he should pay 1000 And mm -hmm. the Lahoud threatened with call these, the other man. How, how is the man? The, the the marshal the name of the marshal i don't know stock stockburn 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 and his deputies and the picture said uh, the the stockburn and his deputies are going to cost cost you more mm -hmm. so it's better uh, you pay with them 100 1000 euros and so it's quite it's quite fair mm -hmm. and he, he the picture came back to the compliment to to tell them that this offer was available for them Mm -hmm. I remember he tried to bribe the preacher, right? That you can work for me in the in the town. We will build a church. church. Build you, yeah, we'll build you a church, and you'll be the preacher of the whole town. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like the answer, right? So you cannot serve both God and money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mammon. Mammon is a Bible name that refers to money. They call money and greed the the god the a god called Mammon. So you can't serve Mammon and God at the same time. <laughs> yeah, inter thank you, Joshua. I, I I did not understood this from the movie, so I was thinking that it's something strange, Mammon. But I understood that it's about money. It's a personification of money and greed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now they have a kind of they uh, they have to decide, right? Or, or they take money, or they I don't know take troubles, right? So those yeah. money. <laughs> What else? Do you remember the um, conversation, the discussion?
Osamos, are you with us? Maybe, maybe some, some problem with the internet. Jihan, could you please help me with number 10? Um, they had two different or opposing ideas. Um, I remember um, Spider, is it Spider? Uh, wanted to um, give up the land and quit and take the money and start somewhere else. Um, and um, Hal wanted the opposite, to save it. Um, I don't remember their last decision, but yeah, okay. Yes, they will not give up the land mm -hmm. and they wanted to fight because they were 20 men and the opposite, they were like seven, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. I remember they, they were not happy about the amount of money, right? They, they said, one of them said it's uh, at least five times uh, less than it should be. Yeah, I mean, they always offer you less than it's worth, right? So if yeah. he's offering us a thousand, it must be worth more than a thousand, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you have to survive to get the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing I remember, uh, one, one guy was, was, was pretty funny. He said, I'm not a brave one, but I'm not, I'm not a coward, right? So let's, <laughs> let's face the, the fight. So the preacher made it clear this guy is offering you a thousand dollars to sell your land and leave, or a marshal's coming. Well, marshal, that shouldn't be a bad thing. The marshal's going to uphold the law. Uh, this is not that kind of marshal. This is a, <laughs> a corrupt marshal, and he's been known to kill people for money. So now it's like, whoa, if I don't take the money, I may die. So a hard decision. <laughs> not, not too hard to me, if you just love me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so money on the one hand, right? And, uh, and on the other hand, what, what they have? A fight and the possibility of money, right? Not, not, not very hard. Yeah. Okay, let's go to number 11. So it's, it's, it's what we call a bird in the hand. If you've heard that idiom, mm -hmm. a bird in your hand, $1,000, is worth two birds in the bush, $5,000, that you can get if he doesn't kill you <laughs> and right. you get lucky. <laughs> so do you want to take what you've got in your hand, 1000 or do you want to risk your life and maybe get 5,000 and maybe get nothing if the two birds fly away? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Chances are so, so. Uh, okay, number 11. So gold, gold discovered. Well, do you remember this discovery? Yeah, yeah. Spider Conway is the man um, who found some pieces of gold or a kind of rock and uh, he was really happy. His, he has two boys and they have never been to the town before as their father didn't want them to go to the town. But after the discovery, God discovery, they decided to go to the town, right? And he was drunk and he started swearing at um, Lahut, uh, saying a lot of bad words. And he, he, he's getting more and more drunk. And at that moment, uh, there's Marshall and man uh, were there talking to Lahut. And Marshall and his man went out while um, Spider was really, really drunk. He couldn't even stand on his two feet. And they killed him by shooting at him. But it should Very. be mentioned. It should be mentioned that they did not kill him in cold blood. They were shooting at his feet, trying to just harass him. Uh, the, he, he, reached, he reached for his gun, and okay. when he reached for his gun, they had a reason to kill him. So that's when they shot him. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think this uh, kind of size of rock of this gold discovery is, uh, is uh, real? Could it be that big? 
Um, what I'm thinking is that yeah, this yeah. makes him so happy. Now he has some hopes at least, you know. Yeah. The size of the, I think they have found a kind of gold. It is not important. This makes him so happy. But what I'm thinking is that the way he was killed is so merciless. Yeah. Yeah, seven against one's a little bit excessive. <laughs> and also, Tishri, I didn't understand one thing there. How dare he go to the town just holding that rock in his hand? Because everybody is after that kind of rock. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Normally, what you do is there's a place in town that you bring your rock with gold in it, and they will assess the value of it, and they'll buy it from you. So what he should have done was gone to the gold assay office, gotten his cash for the, the big rock, you know, paid off all his debts in town, and taken the rest of the money and gone home. But he decided right. to celebrate first by getting drunk. So he was not a very smart man. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What I was thinking about, you know, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia or somewhere else, in the airport, they have a uh, kind of entertainment or something. They have a kiosk with a small hole in it. And the mm -hmm. kiosk is full of uh, gold bullions. Right? It's a bullion, actually, when we yeah. have a kind of a brick. Yeah, so, bullion. Yeah. So you can you can put your hand there, but only one hand. And they say if if you if you can get this bullion with your fingers and get it out, it's yours. You know? Wow! So, yeah, <laughs> but no one just can you know grab it hard enough because it's very heavy. Very heavy, yeah. <laughs> but this guy was playing with a rock of gold so so easily, so it wasn't wasn't plausible to me. And another reason no one stole it from him, Layla, is yeah, yeah. He's bringing it into town and going, "Look what I got! Look what I got! Look what I got!" Yeah. Everyone knew it belonged to him. So if someone took it, it was obvious that he stole it from this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, okay, let's combine two uh, questions. Twenty and thirteen. It's kind of about the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, someone, Jihan, could you please? Uh, which question? Yeah, two, tw twenty, who? Oh, oh, twelve, 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 and thirteen, both. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's kind of one incident, right? If well, they were two different, two different trips, really. Ah, two different. Okay, I'm sorry. So let's go one by one. Then. Just twelve, okay. Jihan. Okay. <laughs> Um, Megan, um, Megan was um, like going around the mine or the company. I don't know what you can call it. Um, she was just looking around, um, and then Josh came um, and tried to attack her, um, maybe to rape her, and everyone gathered around them. Um, then the preach the preacher showed up, uh, fired at them. Um, take the girl um, and went away. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think there are two strange things about this episode. So one of them, you know, when Preacher uh, went back to the camp with a girl, they were, they, were, they were saying, you know, we lost the girl, we're so, we are so worried. And they were sitting at the table drinking tea, you know, so we are so worried, but we <laughs> drink tea here and... <laughs> Not maybe for maybe because she's not the first and the last. They lose some people from time to time. They they just miss them. So but there was her mother, right? So I don't think that mother can think, you know, just another girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, a girl in those days, a girl alone on a horse. Not a smart thing to happen, you know. Nowadays, is it smart, teacher? <laughs> Not even today. <laughs> <laughs> Believe so, me, little... I don't. I don't go out after eight thirty at oh. night, you know. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's even jogging. You have to be. You have to. You know, people jog in the woods, man. Don't jog where you're alone. My God, you're just asking for trouble. Jog around <laughs> your block where there's people around. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Oh, a couple of things. Okay. I was just going to mention. So when she went to the camp and Josh, Josh liked her. So he tried to show off his knowledge. Let me tell you what we do. We do this and we do this and this happens and we can do a big area, you know, just real fast and find lots of gold quickly. He was bragging about how much he knew, you know, his education, if you will, on the job training. And she wasn't really impressed. So then he decided to rape her. Now, remember when the guy started raping her, what happened first before the stranger showed up? Do you remember? Um, that guy, what we called retarded, remember? Club, okay. Right. He didn't want um, them to do that. I so just was, remember his yeah. face. So he was a very gentle guy, what we call a gentle giant. Right. He, he didn't like people picking on women or girls or weak people. Well, right. women, I guess women in particular here. So he went out there and started pushing the men away, trying to save the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the preacher showed up and the preacher ended up saving the girl, but he was going to save the girl. He liked the girl, even though he's retarded. He liked the girl. Yeah. So, okay. And the stranger saved the girl. So now he likes the stranger because the stranger saved the girl and he likes that. So now he and the stranger, he likes the stranger now. Yeah. Because the stranger saved the girl. So the stranger's a good guy. <laughs> but why, why Megan went there? So did she had a, have some idea, um, some kind of research operation or intelligence operation? It might be the first time she's ever gone there. I don't know. Remember, she was kind uh, of a I little remember, angry. I remember something. Megan and her mother had a kind of conversation about preacher. Yeah, kind little, of argument. A little rivalry, a little jealousy going on. Right. So it and was then, a protest kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a kind of protest. I didn't understand her mother at all. You know, how could you feel something like that? Stupid woman. But it, but it may be that she's never been to the mining camp before. So because she was feeling a bit angry and a bit defiant, she said, I'm going to go up and see what that mining camp is. I'm going to go look at it myself. You know, I can yeah, take maybe. care of myself. I'm 15. I can take care of myself. <laughs> My mother got married when she was 15. Or grandmother got married when she was 15. I'm a woman. I can take care of myself. So she wanted to see this mining camp with her own eyes, I think is what it was. She was really angry with her mother anyway, because she said, I saw you and the preacher were looking at each other in such a way that, you know. <laughs> but the preacher wasn't looking back. It was just the mother. Yeah. 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 Okay. What about the second attack? Let's describe the second attack. What so you... remember what caused the second, well, what caused that second attack on the camp was Remember, the, they were mining, the small mining camp they were mining, and there was an explosion, mm -hmm. and LaHood had blown up some rock and blocked their little river, mm -hmm. blocked their little stream. Yes. So now yes. they couldn't mine for gold anymore. Really? So that's what made them angry. So that's why Preacher decided to go do a little payback. Well, if they mm -hmm. blow up our little town, Let's go blow up their mining camp and see how they like it. So that's what prompted the second visit to the camp. <laughs> Jean, could you describe this attack, this swarm of attack? Yeah, with the uh, holes, uh, hole and the stranger, where they have uh, dynamite and they blow all the structures that kept the water. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember he, uh, how, uh, one of dynamite, how we call this? I don't know, a candle of dynamite? A stick, a stick of dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. I remember and the also, Gerard, Hall was with him, right? I Hall think. was with him, yes. Yeah, yes. and also the other guy. No, it, there, there were two of them. No, the big guy had ah, that. Yeah. I remember, yeah. So the son, Josh, was about to kill, right, our preacher, and the big guy prevented it. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, I remember. Because the preacher saved the girl. Mm 
<laughs> so he was now a hero in Club's eyes. <laughs> uh, do you remember the trick how he got rid of uh, how with his horse? There was a trick. Yes, Kerk, half horses, half horse. But before that, he, he pretended he fell uh, one of the stick, right? And how uh, oh, okay. <laughs> was busy with the stick. <laughs> Okay, so he, the, so he lit yeah. some dynamite and he he went and then he dropped it. Whoop, I dropped it. So Hull got down to pick it up. It was lit. So if he didn't pick it up, it's going to blow up and kill him. <laughs> so Hull had to take action since the preacher wasn't going to get down. So when he got off his horse, then that's when he chased his horse away and said, You stay here. I don't want you to die. Take care of Sarah and Megan. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go to the final confrontation. You know, and it reminded me how it's called: good, ugly, and well, good, bad, and ugly. The right? good, the bad, <laughs> yeah. the good, the, the bad, and ugly. The showdown. We call it the showdown. <laughs> Jihan, do you remember this final confrontation? Mm. Yeah, we are talking about these marshals, right? Uh, you mean uh, when they went out uh, to kill him? But they found the hat at the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, he went to hide uh, and killed them uh, one after the other until um, Stuckburn um, was alone in the middle. Um, and I think he killed them. He killed him too. Yeah, right. I, I recall two strange moments. First of them, all these deputies, they were emotionless. Do you remember? He killed five yeah. of them. Yeah. It's okay. No, it's, it's nothing happened. And another one, do you remember how, how many times he needed to recharge his weapon? So it was a long time. And, and when he went to the Stackborn, and Stackborn has his gun loaded, and preacher reload his gun for so long, he he could be killed like ten times. <laughs> I think. I think what happened there. Remember that Stockburn remembered someone in his past mm -hmm. that sounded like the preacher, but he said, "But that's impossible. This man I'm talking about is dead." Right. Mm -hmm. But this preacher was so similar to that guy that he knew was dead. I think what happened at that moment was he didn't kill the guy because he was curious. Who is this guy? He kept thinking, who is this guy? I don't, and he might have had a little bit of fear in him. So I think the, the preacher knew that this guy was a little, little bit afraid that a ghost had come back to kill him so a little bit of maybe inner demon or inner terror in the guy preacher was counting on that or maybe he was just confident the guy you know would miss i don't know but, yeah okay. a little but strange a little strange though. i wouldn't have taken that risk yeah but you know we this? still don't know sorry gerard what happened between these two in the past well one shoot another i guess <laughs> That's simple, right? Uh, let, me, let's, let's, <laughs> yeah. let me mention something you might not have noticed also about the, the, the preacher, the gunman, okay? When you normally load a gun, you pop out the chamber and you put in one bullet, another bullet, another bullet, and you load six bullets one at a time. And that takes a lot of time. He loaded his gun a different way. You might have missed it. What he did is he had what was called a fast loader. He removed the entire chamber and he had another chamber with six bullets already in it. So he just yeah. put the whole chamber there and he loaded six bullets very quickly. So he could load that gun with six bullets very quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. might, that might be another reason why he was kind of calm loading his gun while the guy was looking because he knew it wouldn't take him long to pop mm -hmm. in a six loader and and close it and start shooting, so that may be another reason. Yeah, that I was I was about to tell that, and this piece is called cil cylinder. Yeah, six mm -hmm. bullet cylinder. <laughs> yeah, so he just replaced the whole cylinder with six bullets at once. So it was <laughs> called a fast loader. <laughs> but if you look at a modern revolver on a gun, right? 
it's it's kind of different. So you kind of break it, right? So you open it and you put six ballots together. They already uh, in a in a pattern, kind of in a, in a right, hole. Right. Yeah, so it, you you don't charge it one by one nowadays. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. A, yes. Yeah, there's a device where yeah you can stick six bullets in at once. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But that's not common. Most people load one bullet at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so when the last one, happy end. Do we have happy end? Well, was it happy end? I mean, I did, you know, just enjoy. It was a kind of film that doesn't make me think a lot, but I enjoyed it. it I don't know what you call these kind of films, you know? No. Cowboy. Yeah, Cowboy. no, not 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 a lot of impact on me, but I didn't think anything, just watched. So the girl, the mother got to say goodbye, remember? The mother made love to him one time. Right. If you it didn't was, miss if you didn't miss that. Yeah. I so didn't the, understand that part either, you know. She and was mother. She was going to marry Hull, right? Once you get yeah. married, there's no more playing around, no more having fun. She didn't want to wonder what would have been like to make love to that tough stranger, that hero. What would it have been like to make love to him? She but wanted... teacher B, then afterwards, she's going to marry Hull. How is right. she going to do this <laughs> to Hull? Hull is a nice man. <laughs> well, she she wanted to marry the stranger, but he was going to move around. So she said, I can't live like that. I can't move around with you from man to, you know, from place to place. I want a man that will stay in one place and take care of me and be home all the time. But she, she didn't want to marry Hull and have a boring life and always be wondering what would it have been like to make love to this exciting killer preacher man, you know. She didn't, didn't want to always be regretting that she didn't know. So she decided to do one sin right now. For a Bible person, this was pretty awesome. She decided, I want to, I'm going to sin one time right now so I don't have to wonder or regret that I didn't do this. And then okay. I'll go marry Hull and live a boring life and be happy. <laughs> I don't understand, but, but Meg okay. Regret. Megan was also in love with this man and this yeah. Megan was 15 and this man was in his 50s. <laughs> so so yeah, so Megan was mad. So you said you got to say goodbye to him. I didn't get to say goodbye. So she <laughs> ran out and jumped on a, the wagon and rode into town to, to say goodbye <laughs> to him, to say I love you and goodbye. You know, remember she had gotten angry at him earlier mm -hmm. and said, I hate you. I hate you. So <laughs> now that he's leaving forever, she felt regret and said, I gotta tell him I love him. Uh, I'm, I don't really hate him. I love him. So she's riding into town, but he's already gone. So she just runs to the edge of town. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so she had regret too that she let him go with him thinking that she hated him. You know. So it, so <laughs> regret. There was some re regret there with the the mother and the daughter. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you say us what what kind of moral was in this movie? What can we learn? Um, that there's always hope because the preacher showed up at the middle of <laughs> nowhere and, and they get their land uh, without anyone um, scaring them and there's no future threat so they like um, solve the problem completely by one man yes, there is always place for a hero right who, who can, mm -hmm. can change this Hopefully. I think there's several messages. One of them is opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, there are situations hopeless. And this guy comes through town. And if you don't seize the opportunity to get this guy's help, he's going to leave town and you're going to miss that opportunity for uh, forever. Mm -hmm. So the stranger was kind of an opportunity that came by and they could either choose to use it or choose to lose it. Hull saw this guy as an opportunity to solve his problem. So Hull said, man, you saved my life. We could use you. 
in our current dilemma. Ah, can you come to dinner? So Hull grabbed this guy because it was an opportunity that could say could resolve his situation. Right. Another one right. is the the husband, the the wife, the mother daughter rivalry. They both love the same guy. Neither of them has any hope, but both of them, you know, love is blind, right? There's all they always hope against hope that this wild man can be tamed and become a nice father, you know? Uh, so you had the mother daughter rivalry. So jealousy theme also good versus evil, the big company versus the small guy, uh, corruption, the seven marshals that will sell their services to the highest bidder. So there were a lot of uh, little themes in the movie, but I think the biggest one was, was this man really sent to the town by God's will? Did God send him there to save the small people, to save right. Megan and her mother and Hull? You know, the Bible, he seemed to be, to be an answer to the girl's prayers, right? She prayed for a miracle, and this man comes through that no one's ever seen before, and he's an enigma. He's a killer, but yet he's a preacher. <laughs> so so he's an enigma and maybe he was sent by God because he was in answer to the girl's prayer. So there's a religious element here too. You know, how much do you believe in faith and God's work? <laughs> Let's choose the best one. Love is blind. <laughs> Love is blind, yep. <laughs> Love doesn't have age. <laughs> yep. And and regret, you know. 20 years after she's been married to Hull, 20 years later, I still think about that stranger. What if I had made love to him? What would it have been like? So she would have always regretted not knowing what it would have been like. I she... agree, Teacher Lee, but then, <laughs> then she mustn't marry Hull because this is a kind of betrayal. Yes. Cheated on her, him. Uh, no, not if you do it before you're married. That's not really cheating. <laughs> it's like a bachelor party. You get to go do stuff one more time before you get married. Then you can't do it anymore. So okay. she didn't want to wonder what she had missed. So she said, I'm going to satisfy myself now, and I'm done with it. Now when I marry Hall, there's no regret. You know? <laughs> just, just, just to break this line. Whoa, what, is, what is your moral? What do you mean? I find to don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. And okay. love your home. <laughs> love you, you have love your home? Yes. Because they have $1,000. It's very big. Big money, yeah. Now and then. Yeah, back then it was much better than now. Much, uh, how is it, pricey, right? It, it cost more than now. But still, you cannot kind of. Leave the whole light for one thousand dollars. So it's you just one one. That was a lot of money back then. I think you could have had a comfortable life. Right. Well. <laughs> so, uh, so again, and the one final message is: you're given a choice: take a good amount of money now and leave peacefully, or stay, risk your life for. A little more money, mm -hmm. so that's a that's kind of a life choice, right? You, you know, take some money and be happy with it and live, or risk dying to get even more money. And speaking about the price and prices and money, I remember now. I recall just recalled in the movie it was a kind of a menu in the bar in the town, and it was written uh, seventy five cents for tea bone steak. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I missed that. Okay. Even yeah, things, how could yeah. you be so absurd? I don't Th believe it. Things were cheap back then. Yeah, a thousand dollars was a lot of money. That's why the miner said, "That's a lot of money, man. I can take that money and go, and we can live a comfortable life." <laughs> okay, let's uh, do a few slides. We have a very few few times. So this is a title prepared by Vasans. Oh, okay, what can you think of? Very beautiful letters. Yeah, but it's not letters. It's kind of a lasso. It's a rope. 
You know, how you hold your horses. <laughs> It's kind of a lasso. And can you see this high boot, cowboy, and head, right? With another rope. And I know Wawa, you prepared your own, right? Title slide. Okay, where is where is it? Let me find it. For what you put here. <laughs> wow. Nice. Not bad. Nice, very nice. Not bad. Trying to catch a girl with a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Preacher, priest, priest, right? Priest. Priest. Okay. Okay, well, you, 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 you can do <laughs> for, for, for the next process. Wow. Okay, well, let's, let's find some. So if you don't like, don't like, we have a lot of slides. We have very few time. So if you don't like slides, just tell me, I will skip one of you. Let's start with this one. Jack, could you put? Yes. Lahoud's uh, men are destroying the campament of the team pants, but without killing anyone, any person. They just killed uh, Megan's dog, mm -hmm. the small dog. And I was worried during the, the scene because I thought, oh, this, this girl is, uh, can lose the, his, her life because a uh, stupid dog. <laughs> But it, in reality, it happens. Some people die because want yeah. to protect their dogs. I think they are not wolves. <laughs> dogs are dogs and people are people. <laughs> well, in reality, people commit suicide because someone yelled at them or someone bullied them. So, yeah. Dorothy and Toto. Toto, Toto. Dorothy and Toto, do you remember that? Yeah. So they use kind of a rope, right? They attach the rope to these saddles, right? There's a saddle on the horse where they sit. So they attach the rope and use it like a tractor, you know, to destroy the, their houses. And then. Yeah, we call that the saddle horn. Saddle horn, okay. Okay, so how we call them? These are a few tents, right? Tents on, on the on the on the right. I can see kind of a wagon, I guess. Yep, some wagons. You'll see on the little fire there. They have a tripod, mm -hmm. and they okay. hang a pot down from the top of the tripod over the fire. So the pot hangs over the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not a very kind of. Mm, how to say it? Not a very stable place. So it looks like not a permanent place. It looks look at like a place, you know, for a few days, for a week, then you move. Yeah. Notice on the right side there's an outhouse. Mm. You mean what, one with uh, some? No, kind keep of... going over in the back, in the very corner. There's an outhouse, the upper right corner. Oh, okay, I understand. That tall, yeah. skinny building, the little tall, that's big enough for one person. That's a toilet. Yeah. That's right. a toilet. So we call that an outhouse. <laughs> that's where you go in there and you, and you, it, and you, you shit. Okay. <laughs> you pee and you shit and it sits in the bottom and it, oh, powerful smell. <laughs> that's, right. that's an outhouse. That's their bathroom, their portal <laughs> I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's, let's find something. Uh, with many details. Yeah, what about this one? Whoa, could you please describe this picture? Uh, yes. Mm. They are, mm. they are doing decision result. They are thinking, right? Yes. What to do with this uh, rock, with this boulder, right? Mm. Why? Mm. Because he believes that this is gold. This is gold inside, right? Exactly. And he uh, kind of convinced, right, preacher, that there is a goal, that it's worth this hard job, hard work. Yeah. Uh, so they use sledgehammer, right, a huge hammer, sledgehammer. What else? They have kind of buckets here. I don't know. Ah, there is a pan, right? As usually describe it, pan to, to move of water and uh, Dirt, actually, right? To find this uh, <clears throat> ore, gold ore. Now, you see that rectangular box, Yvonne? That rectangular box? Yeah. By, right. by the buckets? That rectangular box, the bottom is removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they put uh, a wire screen, a wire mesh across the bottom with small holes in it. Mm-hmm. So you scoop up dirt and mud in your pan. You dump it in that 
box with the wire bottom and water and dirt go through the bottom and only rocks are left inside. Teacher Lee, can we say draining? Yeah, it drains out the small stuff and it leaves the rocks. And then you look okay. at the rocks to see if any of them have gold in it. Okay. So that's, that's their tools for looking for gold. Okay, understandable. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's go there. Leila, do you like this? Oh, no problem for me. Yeah, time to dance. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the name of the man? Mm. Uh, Stockburn? No, no, the other guy who oh, was a bad man. Spider. Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Spider was really drunk and he was still real talking. Um, so, um, the deputies, his deputies were shooting mm -hmm. at him, but um, not killing him, but make him dance. Right. So, and think, I think the guys on the right and on the left um, are their sons and the shopkeeper, if I'm not wrong. Could be. And uh, it was a kind of freezing cold. I think the weather is really cold yeah. maybe blizzard i'm not sure mm -hmm. and i can see some um what they are kind of boxes you mean? boxes but wooden boxes right we call them, we call them crates yeah crates okay usually what they are full of they're just full of goods. It might be uh, bags of flour. It might be nails and hammer and tools. So just everything. Just shipping. Yeah, shipping crates. Okay. That's all. You know, his men are merciless and just shooting at him without emotions. Yeah, they have no emotions. Lord, can you read some? Uh, yes. Uh, this one thing I don't understand. In the movie uh, when uh, when who found this little 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 one yeah gold yeah gold, piece. a piece of gold he was happy very happy and when uh, the other man found the big rock yes big rock he wasn't happy <laughs> and he didn't even go to the town maybe the rock uh, was his? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is. It's a big rock in his hand. Can you see? It's a big uh, kind of. Uh, but he's not. Uh, he's not house. Yes. Not house. It's another one. It's spider. Yeah, no, they have the um, like company. They can. Um, you think they, they have share. share? Okay. So who is asking? So if you find a piece of gold, should you share with your companions? Companions? In the town, no. I mean, that little, the little mining yours. camp, no, mm -hmm. they were individual people. So that was all of his money. Basically, he had made it rich. He had hit it rich. He had made yes. success and he threw it away. Yeah. I agree. He could have he, he been rich moved away and lived a good life for the rest of his life with his kids, but he got drunk and squandered his opportunity. Right. Another, another message, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. most get things done than drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last one. Uh, Jihan, could you please? Okay, um, the last scene. Um, mm -hmm. Um, Stackburn was trying um, to hold his gun. Um, I can see a horse. Uh, can I see a horse with its saddle? Mm -hmm. um, and a wagon um, on the left. Wagon wheel or a wagon? Yeah, uh, I guess it's a wagon. Okay, yeah. Mm. The weather was snowy. Um, White House with its lights. Uh, I can see also someone was is behind the glass. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. LaHood, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, okay. I think it's Lahut because uh, Hal came and killed him. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. jumped out of yep, um, yep, the window. Yep. Yes. So Preacher got saved a couple times in this movie, right? Club saved his life, and Hull saved his life. <laughs> so you need someone watching your back, right? You need a team to watch your back. <laughs> even even if you send by gold, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. God takes care of you. He was sent by God. God's protecting him. <laughs> okay. okay, guys. Thank you very much. You have a fantastic thank you. Time. Teacher Lee, thank you. Yes, Teacher Lee, thank you very much. Uh, we have not chosen a movie. We will choose it in our chat for the, for the next week. So thank you and see you. Thank you. Stay healthy, bye -bye. my friends. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.